JavaScript has ruled as the king of web development for ages. It sure has its fans, but it's also pretty infamous for its weird behaviors. Then enters TypeScript, a so-called JavaScript replacement. But news says that big projects are recently ditching TypeScript. Who's going to take the crown of web programming? What should you learn, JavaScript or TypeScript? Welcome back to another episode of Tech Bytes. This is your host Sua, and let me introduce you to the history and news of the two famous web programming languages, JavaScript and TypeScript. Let's start with JavaScript. Statistica states that JavaScript is the third most popular programming language in 2023, following Python. In fact, JavaScript is the most widely used scripting language for web development. An important thing to note here is that JavaScript and Java are two very different languages. Java is an object-oriented programming language, whereas JavaScript is an object-oriented scripting language. JavaScript is a multi-paradigm language, which means it supports different programming styles, such as imperative, declarative, functional, object-oriented, and event-driven. JavaScript allows programmers to be more expressive and flexible. But if it's so flexible and expressive, why would people feel the need to replace JavaScript? As you code in JavaScript, you will notice that it sometimes behaves weirdly due to some design flaws and bizarre features. This would not come as a surprise if you know that JavaScript was made in such a hurry and they only had 10 days to design the language. The internet is full of JavaScript memes because of how weirdly it behaves. Let's take a look at this example. If the string 11 plus the integer 1 is 111, you probably think that the string 11 minus the integer 1 must be 1. But to everyone's surprise, it returns 10. Another famous example is how JavaScript returns banana from b plus a plus plus a plus a. What happens in this process is that JavaScript notices that the plus plus a is not a feature in combining two strings and returns not a number, which is nan. Then it adds b, a, not a number, and the final a into one string and casts the string to lowercase. The next meme explains why JavaScript acts like this. It reads, when you add a string to an integer and wait for an error, but JavaScript returns a string. When two variables of different types are added together, JavaScript implicitly and automatically changes the data type to another without giving an error. This feature is called type coercion. Type coercion in JavaScript gives you freedom, but sometimes too much, because getting an error while developing is often much better than resulting in runtime errors or fatal flaws after the release. Then why can't people just fix the weird features of JavaScript? It's because millions of websites, which is about 98% of all of them, are built on top of JavaScript, and a change or removal of a feature could lead to so many of them malfunctioning. Enter TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, meaning that any JavaScript code runs on TypeScript, and TypeScript codes compiled to plain JavaScript. TypeScript is different to JavaScript because it has static typing. In this example, the type of variables a and b is specified as number. Static typing means that you have to specify the variable type, and there is no type coercion, making it more stable. A study shows that static typing in TS helps detect more than 15% of the bugs written in JS. Static typing may make TS a little more difficult for beginners, but big enterprise projects tend to prefer it due to its high stability. When TypeScript was first released in 2012, it did not receive all the attention it deserved. However, due to its high stability, it is now widely used by many web developers and is growing more rapidly than ever. If TypeScript is like a better version of JavaScript, then you must think it should replace JavaScript in no time. However, although TypeScript is gaining more popularity in web development, it seems like it cannot be a complete replacement for the original. Some recent news even says that a few big projects are removing TypeScript. Fireship claims big libraries like Svelte, Drizzle, and Turbo are ditching TypeScript from their code bases. To be precise, Turbo is removing TypeScript from developing its libraries, but as an end user, you will still be able to use TypeScript just like before. 
The reason behind Turbo's TypeScript removal is that it pollutes the code with type gymnastics, meaning that TypeScript overcomplicates the development process by trying to keep the type static. The reason for Svelte's TypeScript removal is that vanilla JavaScript has no compile step from TS to JS, which is a huge productivity boost for a large framework like Svelte. On the other hand, other sources say it is inaccurate to say that the projects are removing TypeScript because JavaScript is better. They argue that Turbo 8's decision to drop TS was not popular with both Turbo's users and contributors. So which is better than which? Professionals say it depends on what kind of project you're working on. JavaScript is a better choice when you prioritize flexibility. It is easier to run, refresh, and debug small code chunks. If you're a beginner, it will be better to build your foundation with JavaScript, since a lot of learning resources on the internet are based on JavaScript. Plus, it's also easier to learn. However, if you're an enterprise dealing with a large code base, you would use TypeScript for less potential for errors and less flexibility with a single standard. Let me introduce you to JavaScript's new keyword using. The keyword is designed to manage anything with a symbol.dispose function and will help dispose of it when it leaves the scope. It'll be handy in cases such as handling files and database connections. It could be an excellent replacement for keywords let, const, and var in such usages. Of course, TypeScript, being the superset of JavaScript, has also added the keyword. Apart from choosing the right scripting language, you might be interested in finding the best JavaScript runtime. Multiple JavaScript runtime exist, such as Node.js, Dino, and Bun. Node.js and Dino recently had updates with improved performances, and Bun is an entirely new JavaScript runtime known to outperform the other two competitors. If you want to know more about it, there is a whole episode on Bun 1.0 already, so go ahead and check that out. This episode was about web development scripting languages, JavaScript and TypeScript, their history, recent news, and controversies. If you want to know more about programming languages, watch the Mojo episode and stay tuned on TechBytes. This was your host Sua, and I'll see you on the next episode.